When Rookie Folks went to work on the night of July 9, 1990, he had no reason to be worried about leaving his wife and children alone in their home in Sherman, Texas. We ate, and I gave my wife a kiss goodnight. Ricky Folks left for work around 6.30 p.m., leaving four-year-old Kurt and his younger sister, Kristen, in the care of their mother, Pauly. She always goes in and cleans the kitchen after I leave. The kids were making a lot of noise, so my wife had them go in their bedroom and close the door, and they could play as loud as they wanted to then. I called her about 8.30 and asked her what was going on and stuff. I always call her at night, see how things are going. She said she had a real bad headache and that she was sleepy. And this was unusual because she always feels pretty good. Around 9 p.m., Kurt came out of his room. Mama, wake up. Mama, wake up. I want something to wake up. I thought I'd wake up. She won't wake up. Mama, I want something to wake up. Please wake up. Please. Mama. Mm. Two miles away, Wanda Knight got Kurt's call. Hello. I didn't recognize the voice at first. Uh, he kept saying his name, but he said it real fast. When he kept talking about his mom, he couldn't wake up his mom. I thought maybe he thought he was calling someone else, you know. And so I thought, well, maybe I should listen to what he had to say for a second. What did you say your name was? C-U-R-T. Oh, Kurt. My number was pre-programmed on Polly's phone. She had told me that she had pointed out to Kurt the day before what to do in case of an emergency. And uh, she told him that if he needed somebody to call us. And so I said, well, do you want me to come over and check on her? And he said, yeah. So I said, OK, I'll be there as soon as I can. I thought maybe she was sick or something, or, or just asleep, and he probably wasn't shaking her hard enough. I thought maybe he's exaggerating or something like that. I really expected Polly to answer the door when I got there. Wanda arrived at the Fulks' house within a few minutes. Polly? Polly? I don't supposed to open the door for people what I don't know. Kurt, you called me now, remember? When I went in and saw her laying on the couch, then I began to get concerned. Polly, Polly, wake up. Kurt was kind of teary-eyed. It was Polly. startling to him that his mom wouldn't wake up. Polly. When I picked Polly. up her hand and it was so limp, I thought that was real strange. I realized that maybe I need some help here. Yes, hello. This is Wanda Knight. I have an emergency here. What's happening? I don't know. My uh, a little friend of mine called and said he couldn't wake his mommy up. And okay. She's laying here on the couch and she won't wake up. All right. We'll get an ambulance in route immediately. All right. Thank you. Polly, Polly, wake up. Come on, Polly, wake up. Polly. Paramedics from a nearby fire station were immediately dispatched, along with an ambulance from five miles farther away. I went over and picked up the baby and took her by the hand, took him to the open door, and I said, you know, Mommy's going to be okay. Let's go and watch the ambulance come in. They were there for just minutes. I mean, it was less than five minutes, I know. When firefighter Richard Anderson and paramedic Travis Pickle arrived, they had no idea what the problem was. The first thing it is was an odor of gas. The gas was so thick at any time it could reach a pilot light, a power surge, telephone ringing. One spark could cause the whole place to blow up. I was just so anxious about waking her up, and I was rushing to and fro. That's the reason I didn't smell the gas right off. I really didn't even think about it. 
And as I entered into the kitchen, I could hear a sound. It was like a hiss of uh, steam escaping or uh, uh, air leaking from a tire, just a type sound. I turned off the stove and began immediately to open the windows and the doors to get the oxygen into the house. We went back outside and waited on the lawn. As long as you have the gas environment, what you're going to be breathing will be the gas, and it's just going to slowly cause you to suffocate. She was probably just, I would say, minutes away from death. Okay, she's coming around a little. Take some good deep breaths for me, okay? During the situation, the mother was so groggy that she didn't really understand what was going on. As we got her outside, she started to come around even more. She kept asking where her kids were, and I kept trying to reassure her that I had her kids and they were okay. I guess she didn't hear because she kept asking where her kids were. Polly and her children were taken to the hospital, where they were examined by Dr. Jerry Gray. Apparently, a Kurt wasn't experiencing the same effects she was, maybe because he was in a different room with a lower concentration of gas or just being lowered to the floor. Had he not uh, intervened and, and gotten help to his mother when he did, my estimate, another 20 minutes would have been fatal. Two weeks later, four-year-old Kurt Fultz received an award for heroism from the city of Sherman, Texas. For his courage and conscientious in saving the life of his mother. We were all impressed with Kurt. He was proud of what he'd done, and he was uh, not only proud, he, was, he said, if you'd been there, I'd save you, too. Give me five, John. <laughs> <laughs> and we're real we're proud, proud of you, the young man. Pauly Fultz is grateful that her son knew what to do in an emergency. If it hadn't been for what he did, there would not be Kurt, there would not be Kristen, and there would not be me. Mama and Daddy told me I can call on the of something wrong. I was hoping he would pick up the phone and call if something was wrong, but, you know, that's something you never can tell until it happens. Probably what happened was when she was cleaning the stove, apparently she sprayed out the pilot light, and my little girl went in and turned on the stove and started gas going throughout the house. We think this because a week earlier, she turned one of the burners on. We've taken the knobs off the stove, and when they get older, we'll put the knobs back on. But for right now, they're off. They're in the drawer. 